What's up, YouTube? I am about to break all of my rules for creating videos on this channel. And uh, it's for a good cause, because today, moments ago, I found out that Airtable launched its interface. This is a highly anticipated new feature that has been whispered about for months, if not years, and without any warning, it just launched right now. So yes, it's 11 p.m., I've worked a full day, but we're recording this video and editing it as soon as possible to get it out so that we can all learn about the interfaces together. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Oh, I need a coffee. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth Protovost and I own a company called Gap Consulting. Its mission is to help you to organize and automate your business and work life using no-code tools. And Airtable is at the core of what we do. And as I mentioned in the intro here, Airtable has just pushed out an amazing new feature that's gonna show us how to leverage interfaces inside of our database. And this is a huge new release. Now, before we get into the heart of the video, I want to invite you to join me for my upcoming live webinar. Once a week, I hop onto a webinar and I present the basic building blocks of using no-code automation in conjunction with tools like Airtable. So if that's of interest and you want to learn how to leverage automation to save up to 20 hours per week without writing a single line of code, definitely check out my upcoming training at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. I'm sure we all have a lot of questions, so let's hop on into exactly what I'm gonna be covering in this video. First and foremost, I wanna talk about what plans are currently allowing the new interface within Airtable. So we're gonna take a look at what plan you have to be on in order to get access to this. And I'm also gonna drop some hints as to what I think might be the case in the future. From there, we're gonna take a quick look at how to create an interface, and I'll be going through just a simple database and how you can put together an interface for your team on that. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about what this means for our favorite tools that we've already started embracing and probably fallen in love with by this point. I'm talking about mini extensions, Stacker, and of course, Softer. So what does this mean, these interfaces in Airtable, and how is that going to impact the whole community and subsequent tools that have been built around the Airtable ecosystem. So let's jump into part one. What is included? What plan do you have to be on in order to get Airtable interfaces? I was really surprised by the answer here. Check out the Airtable pricing, scroll on down, and you will find that Interface Designer is currently available with any pricing tier, including the free plan. I'm blown away by this. But this comes with a caveat. That caveat being when you're in Airtable, if you're looking at the interface designer, you will see that during beta, you will get the ability to create unlimited interfaces, access all interface design features, and share interfaces with your entire team. But at the bottom, you should notice that it says interface designer will be in beta until early 2022. And after the beta ends, your workspace will retain access to any interfaces you build during the beta, regardless of your Airtable plan. And to me, this is an indication that Airtable thinks that interfaces are not going to be available on all plans moving forward into the future. Now, of course, this is a massive new feature that they've released. And so they're probably looking to get us all very excited about it. And they want to launch it out to everyone just as they did with scripts. If you recall, when scripts first came out, it was made available to everyone. And over time, they pulled back on that and now scripts are just available to that pro plan. So don't be surprised if in the future, interfaces are no longer available at all paid tiers. But as of this recording, as of interface designer just being launched, it is available to every Airtable plan. Let's now jump into an actual example and take a look at how this all works. But first, of course, we have to start with the data structure. I'm keeping it super simple so we can get to the good stuff. In my database, I have clients, just a name, a phone number, and those clients connect to projects. 
In my projects table, I have a name of the project. It relates to a client. Project has a start date and tasks associated with it. Now, lastly, those tasks, you'll see we have them grouped by project here. This is the project link. There's a person in charge. I've got a start date. I've got an end date and I have a completed checkbox, whether that task is done or not. Of course, each task also has its own name. Really straightforward, practical for many, many businesses because a lot of us have clients, projects, and tasks that are associated with all the work we do. So let's jump into interfaces. The first place you need to head is in the upper left corner. Check on that interfaces button. Now I've already started creating an interface here just to kind of test it out just before recording. Haven't gotten very far. So let's go ahead and create a new one. And by the way, if you want to see where I had that pop up from earlier, check it out, click on beta, and that's where I got that information. And also, if you want to drill in, Airtable's put an incredible support doc together for us already. Check out Learn More, and you'll be going to the Airtable guide that they've provided for creating your own interface. But we're going to jump right in. Let's go ahead and create new, give it a name here. Pop in a description as needed and notice that your interface will become accessible by the home screen, meaning that when someone's actually logged into Airtable, and let me go ahead and pop into my standard Airtable for you here. When I click into bases now from the home screen, interfaces is gonna pop up at the very top of all of this. So right here on the left-hand side, above my workspaces, I have interfaces, and that is where that interface is gonna show up once it's created. So let's go ahead and pop back into that interface and we'll skip the description for now and click next. You can walk through the different steps here, create new, and I've got three different examples that I can choose from to kind of get started quickly, or I can start with a blank canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the record summary here. You'll notice that when I make that selection, my image changes here and I get a different preview of what's to come. I can go ahead and click next, and here I'm being asked to link up to the right table. So I can either tell it, well, yeah, I want to look at clients at the high level. And you'll notice that this drop down up here has my clients in it. And when I've selected the clients, it's showing me some information that it thinks I want to see in my interface, namely the project that's connected to that client, the client name and phone number. But if I make a change here, change this to projects, let's say, now in my top drop down, I'm selecting from a project. I see the name of the project. I see what client is linked to it the start date of the project, and then all the tasks. So what I'm seeing inside of this is a breakdown of all of the things that are visible to that particular record. And I'm making the selection of the record here at the very top. I'm gonna to go with projects. That sounds like a good pick for me. And if I want some data options to come in from a view, if I have multiple views, I could do that. Perhaps I wanna limit certain things. I don't wanna show all the fields. This is the point of using the interface to begin with because the interface's objective is to make a workflow more streamlined so that you don't get stuck seeing all of the stuff that you don't wanna see and instead you're only seeing the data that you need to see in order to perform a specific task or workflow. For now, I'll stick with my grid view. If I want to apply a filter, you see that I can apply them here condition and condition group, just as we now have those more advanced filters inside of our views, we can apply them here as well, and then a sorting option as well. Now, if I'm good with this, I'll move on to next. From here, we're asked to choose what fields are gonna show up. If we wanna hide those fields again, all we do is toggle them off. Any fields that are showing up in our projects table, we can either elect to show or hide from this particular interface. I'll keep it all there just for the sake of seeing it in action. Click next, give this a name and a description if we'd like and finish. And here we are right inside of our interface. We now have a clean interface that we can interact with. And the cool thing is we have the ability to include other things as well. One thing that really strikes me as creative is the ability to add in the record comments. This is one of those things that if we were working with another external third-party tool, we don't get access to those comments that live inside the records. But here, because we're building this interface inside of Airtable, I can use these record comments. Just by clicking and dragging, I can move them around here. Let's say I wanna put them right next to the client. 
And there it is, the comments that live inside of this record showing up directly on my interface. Now from here, I can go to all elements down here, and you'll see that I actually have a lot of other options. I can do the record picker, which is this little piece up here. I can add numbers, charts, timeline views, grids, filters, dividers, all kinds of things have become available to me in this new interface designer. Let's go ahead and assume that we're happy with this layout and see how this thing works in action. Once I'm ready to go, up here, I can publish this interface. Making this selection, I can go through here, add a description again, and publish those changes. Once those changes are made, let's pop back into Airtable and see how that shows up inside of our account. Here it is at the top, now that it's been published, and I can click into my test interface, and here is the project piece that we built inside of this interface. You can add multiple elements like this, and each one of them presents their own page or their own workflow inside of this interface. I'll go ahead and click into project, and like you would expect, here I am. I can select different projects from the list, and remember, it's only gonna be one at a time, so in this case, maybe I wanna look at the Dynamite Excavation Project. It shows me that the client is Acme. I can leave a comment. And from there, check out all the information, my start date, my tasks, etc. If I click on tasks, it actually opens up that record. And I wanna come back to this thought when I'm talking about my third and final point in this video. So push pause on this for now. But of course, if I wanna make changes, I can add a new person in charge. I can add comments here, etc. Outside of here, if I back up, go back to the test interface in the upper left corner, if I had added other elements here, they would be visible. But in this case, I only have the one piece to my test interface interface. Going back into Airtable to verify anything that I do in that interface is showing up here in my actual raw data that lives back in Airtable. In this case, even the comment that I left is now appearing inside of my Airtable database. So a really powerful tool Pretty excited to take it out more and more to see how we can build more efficient workflows with this new feature. So what does this mean for all of those amazing third-party tools that have come out to solve this problem in their own unique way? Again, I'm thinking about Softer, I'm thinking about Stacker, and I'm thinking about mini extensions, just to name a few. All of us in the Airtable community have grown very fond of these tools, and there are constant debates over which is best, why it's best, and all of the amazing things that we've built with those third-party user interfaces. So what is my prediction for these and what do I think is gonna happen over the long haul? In short, I don't think that the Airtable interface is directly competing with the third-party interface. And the reason for that is, in order for you to share your interface with other people, they have to be Airtable users inside of your data space. Let's flip back into the designer and take a look at what I mean. When I go to share this in the upper right corner, if I wanna share this with somebody on my team, when I make that selection, you'll see that Airtable warns me that anyone with this symbol, any email addresses that I've gone to share this interface with, mentions to me and warns me that they will be added to the connected base and granted a certain level of permissions to both the interface and the base. I can make a change here and limit the type of permissions that they have inside my base, but is that really what I wanna do? Most of the time when we are using an interface, especially when it's external, meaning that we are giving access to clients or people outside of our organization, 99 times out of 100, we don't want those people to get access to all of the data. And unfortunately, with Airtable's interface as it is at its present moment, when we share access, we are sharing all of the data. Even though the interface will definitely help streamline a workflow, it doesn't mean that we are in any way guarding our data or keeping it any more secure, because again, we're sharing everything. If I had to speculate, it might have to do with their revenue model. Airtable charges per user that you share access with to your database in permissions that are greater than read-only. So it's in Airtable's benefit to convince you to share your data with more people. Another reason that I think third-party portals will continue to thrive, even in spite of Airtable's own interface tool, 
is because those third-party portals allow us to receive user authentication when they are accessing our app. With third-party tools, we can build true web apps, and I don't get the feeling, at least not at present, that the same functionality is quite available here inside of Airtable's interfaces. Yes, they seem like an excellent solution for internal teams and for specific workflows, but I don't get the feeling that they're going to give us a true app experience, a true web app from start to finish. Now, I could totally be wrong about this, but this is my initial reaction after having played with the tool for a quick 90 minutes or so. Let me know what you're excited about, what you love, what you don't love about the new Airtable Interfaces feature, and I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly, and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.